which might be better for you coming into the Dubai real estate market as an investor. Should you be considering commercial real estate as opposed to residential real estate? I'm going to give you some food for thought in this video. In this video, I'm going to be focused on offices, but whether it's offices you're looking to purchase or a residential investment or home, there is a link below. Hit it, click it. Let's see and talk if we are a good fit to work with each other. Like, subscribe and bell icon. And obviously, if you've got a burning question you really want to ask, put it in the comment section. We generally take it up once a week and answer your questions. All right, guys, listen, let's focus on the offices. OK, now I'm going to start off by telling you that there is a general there is a general shortage of freehold office space in Dubai. OK, so I'm making this bold statement, but hear me out. I want you to come back all the way to 2008 with me. Now, what happened in 2008? The market was only about five to six years old. Dubai was going through its mega boom. OK, so 2007, 2008. So don't hold me to the actual year. But Dubai was going through its big first freehold and mega boom, which meant that not only sales prices were shooting up, but residential sale prices and rental prices were also going up very fast, which essentially meant that meant that a lot of landlords, they would end up acquiring a property and they would tell the older tenant, hey, listen, you've got a choice. Pay us 50,000 dirhams more per annum or you can leave the property. So in this stage, to, man to manage this menace, so to speak, the Dubai government, through the real estate regulatory agency under the Dubai Land Department, released something called the Rental Index Guidance. OK, so the Rental Index Guide would actually dictate how the rent can be increased in a certain apartment building or residential building, so on and so forth. Now, as these rents control, you can say, started coming in, a lot of investors thought that, well, what's immune to this rental guidance? So they figured offices, perhaps hotel rooms are going to be immune. They thought wrong. However, they took precautionary measures and they acted quite fast. So what they did was they rezoned, they rezoned, if there was a plot of land here, plot of land here, plot of land here, this was residential, this was residential, and this was commercial so that people could live in offices here, uh, work in offices here and live here and live here. And generally, you know, in every city, commercial, residential, what kind, what number of parking spots are required? How many parks are going to go there? How many hospitals are going to be required? Schools and so on and so forth are generally decided by the government. However, the government allows and gives you some leeway, which means that if you are the owner of this residential plot, and you want to convert it into and rezone it into a commercial plot, you will be allowed to do that. OK, so what essentially have you'll be allowed to do that and there'll be certain costs associated with that. Maybe you have to pay for extra parking uh, for the people coming in the morning, extra congestion on the road, so on and so forth. Now, what ended up happening in 2007, 2008 is that a lot of people rezoned. So they rezoned their residential plots into commercial plots as well which essentially meant that Dubai was going to have more commercial office space, right? Makes sense. However, what ended up happening 2008 October is finally the global financial crisis hit Dubai, which meant that all this construction of all these office buildings that was supposed to take place either extremely slowed down or it never took place, right? And in fact, I am privy to this because in 2013, 14, when I was working with a very large fund, we had a large piece of land that was zoned commercial. And then uh, the fund went back to the government and rezoned it as residential so that we could sell um, residential properties in the market. OK, now what? But but OK, now you'd say, well, how does this lead to a shortage? Because remember, so many residential buildings were converted into commercial, but then the global financial crisis came and then they never got built. OK, so even today in Dubai, there is a certain shortage of freehold commercial space, specifically A grade freehold commercial space. OK, we have still C and B grade uh, commercial space. Now, if you're looking to come into the market, 
to invest, whether it's in commercial or residential, there is a few things that you'll need to obviously take account in, okay? How does offices getting rented out compare to your residential experience? So imagine you're a landlord and you either own an office or a residential apartment. How's your experience going to vary? Now, if you've bought an office, there is a chance that you've bought a shell and core office, okay? A shell and core office basically pretty much just means that there is a, a full box, okay? It's going to be a full, it's going to be a full box with no partitions, with no walls inside it, okay? Now, you as the owner will have the choice to either create the partitions and the rooms or a lot of people end up not doing it and leaving it to the new tenant and allowing them to do it. Whereas residential, you know, rooms where the bathrooms are, are all pretty much uh, done before you can take the key for handover and put it in the market for rent. But because you take it sometimes shell and core as opposed to ready and residential, you will sometimes have to give a three to six months free period to your tenant for the first year, okay? In residential, there is no free period, okay? The day the tenant moves in, perhaps you give them a grace period of five to 10 days so they can move in, settle in, and so on and so forth, and kind of like a, just a good habit from your side, kind of like a good gesture, hey, okay, we give you some free days to move in earlier, but in office space, if the, if the office is shell and core, the tenant's going to have to fit it out, they're going to ask you for some free time. Now, that's going to be negotiable. You're going to try to give them two months or a month. They're going to ask you for three to six months, right? Because they're saving rent, okay? Thirdly, generally speaking, when you're renting out office space, obviously you're dealing with professionals on the other side, right? Because you're dealing with a business, right? Which makes life a little bit easier. They understand business. You're running a business. They're running a business. When you're renting out, apartments, villas, townhouses, you're, regular, you're renting it out to regular Joes, right? Who might not understand that it's a business for you, right? So if you're willing to not give any free days and they want a few five or 10 free days just because the last landlord offered it to them and you say, no, I'm not gonna give you free days because it's gonna cost me about $1,000 or $2,000 or $5,000, they're not gonna understand that because they might not understand it's a business for you, right? Which in that scenario, you're going to need a professional property manager to manage this for you, okay? When you've got offices being rented out to commercial enterprises, they're going to come in with special T's and C's. Be ready, be prepared that some of these, especially if you've got a large office space, are going to have lawyers draft contracts or they're gonna have lawyers go over contracts that you have made for them to sign. And they're going to advise you special T and C's. They might sometimes say that, look, we're going to be coming into this office we're going to be spending X number of money and man hours to fix it up to our taste. We're not going to be leaving in less than five years. And you as the landlord are going to have to agree to these special terms and conditions. They might tell you, for example, in the residential, it's going to be regular T's and C's. Under residential thing, you can always say that we have the right to visit the property within a 48 hour notice at an opp opportune time that's convenient to all parties. If it's a business, perhaps it's a law firm where they are dealing with high-end clients, where everything needs to be kept confidential, they will have the right to put a clause in that you as the owner do not have the right to visit the property and you can either accept it or tell them, look, sorry, I don't, have, I don't want you as a tenant, but those special T's and C's are gonna come in, so you better have a team not just of lawyers but perhaps property managers dealing with you especially if it's a small office offices look they're running a business concern they know it's your business as well generally speaking in my personal opinion they will pay you on time except if their business is not doing well then you're gonna have to sit and negotiate and exit with them regular joes over here they're probably almost always on a job or employment unless they lose employment, they're always going to be paying you on time, okay? Last but not the least, the idea is for you to generate rental income, okay? Some people like offices, some people like residential. Now, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a balanced advice and I'm gonna say that capital appreciation in the A grade office space is going to far out exceed 
rental income over the la next five years okay now this is a or b plus so if you choose to buy an office try to do it in a b plus or a grade building how do you identify it get a commercial broker to talk to you who has experience in other than dubai and dubai okay and they're going to be able to guide you on what are the a or b plus assets in dubai which you can acquire these are going to see massive capital appreciation in my opinion rental income is going to be solid but it's not necessarily going to be much much more than capital appreciation coming through okay so just want to give you some food for thought if you're coming into the market and you're assessing both commercial and residential opportunities both have the nooks crannies and value you've got to go out there search based on exactly what i've just shared with you from my experience and perhaps you can discover what's good for you out there as well there's a link below if you would like to work with us hit it click it let's talk don't forget like subscribe and bell icon and show some love in the comment section you can ask us a question we'll be happy to answer it we generally take them up once a week in our live sessions ciao for now hey guys thank you for watching the video i hope you liked it my name is Fad Daud. i've been doing this for 15 plus years i started in uh, toronto canada in 2006 and since 2007 i've been based in dubai and doing real estate in dubai look if you're looking to work with me, there's a form below and my mobile number. I do paid consulting. You can also uh, get help for, uh, from my team for services. If you like the video, press the like button, press the subscribe and the bell icon and share it with uh, your friends who you feel would be able to benefit from the content of this video. Last but not the least, I'll repeat, me and my team's role is always going to be to help and select the best property for you. Your role will be to invest in that property and we will in turn invest in your life and your future. Bye for now.